Okay, uh, a cross between a tall plant and a short plant. Now we're gonna assume that this is the same legend. Capital T, doesn't matter what that other allele is, is gonna be a tall. And the only way that I can get short is if I have two recessive uh, alleles, little t's, and that's gonna give me short. So we're just gonna assume that that is the same legend, even though it didn't say it in this question. Uh, that's the same legend that we used in uh, 2A and 2B. Okay, so a cross between a tall plant and a short plant. So underline the parents. Uh, let's put their genotypes. In order to be a short P plant, the only thing you can be, look at our legend, is two little T's. Now this question is a little bit different than 2A or 2B that we done previous. Uh, a tall plant is capital T. Go take a look at our legend. If it's a tall plant, it's a capital T. But in this case, it doesn't tell us if it is a homozygous tall plant, capital D, capital T, or if it's a heterozygous tall P plant, capital T, little t. And because it doesn't, we don't know that genotype. That is an unknown, okay? Now, when it's an unknown like that, there's no use doing a Punnett square because you remember what a Punnett square did. Punnett square put these guys uh, the genotypes into isolated gametes, but we don't know what that is. So you don't do a Punnett square when you have these type of questions. So let's just transfer what the parents are that we do know, and what we don't know, we're gonna represent with an underline, okay? And we do know that the short plant is this. When you encounter these type of questions, you have to go do a different series of problem solving steps. This is all articulated in our notes, so this shouldn't be new to you. So when we see this, don't go do a Punnett square. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at offspring. And not just any old offspring, we're gonna look for a recessive offspring because that's a big indicator what this unknown parent may be. So it says, it produces some offspring. It says, now we're not gonna get hung up on ratios at this point. We're gonna just take a look and we're gonna see if we have any recessive offspring and we do it says we have some short don't get hung up on the ratio yet uh, when there are short p plant offspring that means some of these offspring were this little t little t now we know when you have short offspring that each parent must contributed one of those recessive alleles for you to have short offspring. One of them came from that parent and that's all they could have donated. The other one had to have come from this parent. So now, because they're short offspring, we know that this unknown parent must have been carrying one of those alleles that are recessive for there to be short offspring. So now we filled in and that's what this question wanted us to do what is the genotype of the parental plants? And by looking at that offspring and seeing that there was a recessive offspring in there, in this case, we don't even care what the ratio is, uh, what the ratio is, we're able to fill in that unknown blank. And that is our answer, okay? Uh, the rest of the question says, which of the parent genotypes is true breeding? Remember your terminology. True means homozygous. And homozygous means the same, right? Identical genotypes, okay? Well, this one is hetero, so that can't be it. This one is two genotypes or two alleles that are exactly the same. So our parental genotype that is true breeding would be this one right here. This is a true breeding parent because both their alleles are identical. Okay, thanks guys, any questions, just give me an email and we can go over this, thank you.